Hey everyone, what's up? This is Brett and welcome to this week's episode of Friday on the Turntable. This week's featured album is going to be Century Flower from the group known as Shelley and Orphan. This is definitely an, a record that I've talked about in the past here and there, but it's never received the deluxe Friday on the Turntable feature, so that's what I'm doing right now. I first became aware of Shelley and Orphan back in 1990. Uh, a friend of mine named Robert had seen them open up for The Cure on their prayer tour for the Disintegration album and he was really blown away and he had their cassette I think and he brought it over, played it for uh, my brother and myself and uh, to this very day whenever I hear songs from this album it takes me right back to being 17 years old and it just almost just makes my muscles weak. Uh, it takes me back to simpler times. Uh, to describe the sound of Shelley and Orphan, I would put them in the league of uh, Baroque pop. So think of them as a more 19, late 80s, early 90s version of Nick Drake with mostly a female singer. Uh, acoustic guitars mixed with drums and orchestral instruments. So you have everything from double bass, oboe, flute, French horn, uh, cellos, violins, violas. It's just this lush, beautiful instrumentation. So Shelley Norfolk is made up of two people, uh, that being Caroline Crawley and Jamal Tail. Uh, they both do sing, although she handles the majority of the lead vocals. He sings lead on a couple songs as well as lots of harmonies and he plays some instruments and stuff. We'll, we'll get into the vocals a little bit later on this one. But uh, Century Flower is their second album. This came out in 1989. It was preceded by Hella Boreen, which you can see back there behind me. Uh, Century Flower was produced by David M. Allen and he produced all of the Cure albums from the top all the way to Wish, so that was what, 84 to 92. He also did the Sisters of Mercy's first um, album, First and Last and Always. All right, so the title track, Century Flower, has to be one of my favorite songs of all time, period. Uh, it begins with this delicate piano. There's a double bass that comes in, uh, finger pizzicato, which means it's not played with a bow. Oh, and I should also mention that bass player is Danny Thompson, and he was a member of the band Pentangle. And he also played on Nick Drake albums, Ellis Costello, Eric Clapton, etc. Just a very prolific uh, uh, bass player. Uh, then the song kind of uh, changes a little bit. Strings come in and then uh, the angelic vocals of Caroline Crawley. It's a, it's a wonderful song and it's one of the, mo I think one of the most beautiful uh, examples of weaving an oboe into quote unquote pop music. Uh, just absolutely outstanding and as I said earlier just one of my favorite songs. Uh, Silent Day which actually uh, kicks off side two and it's the song that uh, precedes Century Flower. Another one acoustic guitar it has a rolling drum part, cello, strings that, that uh, harmonize and support the vocal melody and uh, the chorus just as I mentioned um, earlier in the intro just kind of weakens me. It's absolutely just gorgeous. A uh, third favorite track, I'm going to go with Tar Baby, which is the third song on side one. Uh, another ch just chilling vocal performance, lush instrumentation, strings, and there's these little flourishes by the flute. Just outstanding. Now I have to mention a few just little notes of criticism on this one, because the things that I uh, disliked about it 25 years ago, I still have not really resolved. and. Uh, while I do appreciate the backing vocals of Jamal Tail, uh, the, the songs that he actually sings lead vocals on, which being Summer Flies and A Few Small Hours, which close side one and then close the album, uh, I just never felt the vocals on that. And I would have just loved to hear Caroline Crawley sing A Few Small Hours, the closing track. I think it would have been a much more effective ending to it. So after the release of Century Flower, as I mentioned earlier, the band toured in support of The Cure. Um, and then in 1992, they released Humroot, their third album. I remember buying this when it came out. I still have the CD long box for it somewhere packed away in a closet. Uh, check out the track Burst from this one. Really a great song. They broke up shortly after that. Caroline Crawley went on to form a, another group with her boyfriend Boris Williams from The Cure. He was the drummer back then called Babacar. In 1998, they released the self-titled album. Uh, then uh, Shelley and Orphan got back together 
Uh, and then in 2008, they released their fourth album. And after that, it's kind of went blank from them. I haven't heard much news as to whether or not they're going to still record, tour, what the story is. 1989, what a great year for music. I'm going to show you five other things that came out that year. The Cure's Disintegration. What needs to be said about this other than this being just an absolute masterpiece? Lou Reed, New York. Another great one. Love and Rockets, their self-titled album, So Alive. That was such a huge radio hit for them. Ministry, The Mind is a Terrible Thing to Taste. I remember getting this on cassette for Christmas when it came out. Absolutely killer. And then this album, New Order Technique, which actually has its 26th anniversary today. Excellent. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. Down in the description box below, I'm gonna have a link which takes you over to the Life on This Planet blog, which will have purchase link for Shelly and Orphan, as well as a couple samples that you can check out their music. I also encourage you to click on the links for my Facebook page or Twitter and, uh, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.